of the stock swoosh. And um, you may also know Melissa from TV. She is often on TV doing market commentary. So Melissa, good morning to you. We're happy to have you with us to kick off our day. Good morning. Can you hear me? I can, yes. Wonderful. All right. So let me go ahead and stop my share for you and you can go ahead and take the screen and get started. Let me know if you can see that and I'm going to move the chat. Can you see the slide? Oh, yes, it looks good. Wonderful. Thanks so much for having me, Marissa and Rob. It's great to be here. You have to forgive me. My voice is a little crackly. I've been talking a lot this week. I'm kind of losing my voice today, actually. It's been a very busy trading week, especially with yesterday. And today we're going to talk about momentum. We had a lot of momentum in stocks and the overall market yesterday. And of course, we are today as well. So welcome everyone. Today we're gonna to talk about trading momentum and gaps. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Melissa Armo. I do appear on TV. I talk about the economy. I talk about the stock market. I talk about inflation. I'm actually on Schwab tomorrow at 2.45. If you're around, you can watch me discussing several earnings. Of course, it is earnings season. So it is officially the first full week of earnings this week. And we have a huge earnings report out tonight, which is Netflix. That happens after the bell, after 4 o'clock, and that will 100% affect the market. So whatever the market does today, whatever reaction we have this morning, I think will be muted by Netflix overnight because, again, Netflix is going to do what? Netflix is going to gap, and we're going to talk about what a gap is in a minute. If you have questions, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, or Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. And again, I try to put different videos in there, talk about what I do, and clips of the live trading room. So here we are. I can't even believe it. We're more than halfway through 2024. It's almost shocking, actually. Before you know it, it's going to be fall. And the thing is that, I mean, we're getting into period of the election season, and I think that's going to create some havoc in the market and of course the Fed, are they going to lower rates? The market has been so driven and so bullish this year in 2024, consistently making new highs because they believe that the Fed is gonna lower rates at least once, if not two times between now and the end of the year. If they don't, I think that's gonna create some massive selling in the market. But again, half the year is over, more than that, and it's a good time to take a look at what you're doing. Are you making money or are you losing money? Because if you're losing money or you're not on track for the year, it's a good time to take a step back. That's why it's good to come into lectures like this to go over and review because you have plenty of time to change what you're doing for the year and still make money for this calendar year. So I have in here our stats. This is for the live trading room. I run a live trading room every day. I'm not today because I'm with everyone here, but I run a live room where I call the trades live. I risk an average of about $3,000 risk per day trade. These are day trades on margin. They're mostly shorts. We're going to talk about shorts today. So, so far, year to date, I don't have yesterday's, but I do have yesterday's, uh, the other trade we did in here, 522,687 halfway through the year. So we're, we're on a good pace for the year. And again, it's earnings season, which means what? There's lots of opportunities to trade. I also trade options. We will talk about some options today too. I risk more money in my options because some of the options that I do are expensive. And again, I tend to tr hold my options overnight. Uh, Navinia used to be a very expensive option. We did, of course, a stock price split, so it's much, much more cost effective. But still, if you have a stock that's expensive, it's cheaper to still trade it as an option rather than to do it on margin. Uh, but I risk about an average of $8,000 per trade in my options. So obviously, I'm up more for the year in that, but still on pace, 1559615 for the year. So overall, 2024, over 2 million so far, and I have to stay focused. So again, mostly I short, which you may say, well, how can you be shorty when the market is running up and the market's making new highs? Guess what? It's a lot easier to make money to the downside when the market's rallying. And I'm going to explain about that too. But it is all about chunking it out. I find that teaching people, I teach a class, which we'll talk about at the end, teaching people, people are all over the place. I just had a conversation with someone two days ago. And he was telling me that he's been doing 50 to 60 trades a day. That's completely insane. Um, that's just nuts. Again, one trade a day is all that you need in order to make money. And then you add the size. 
And then of course you can do options, which you can hold overnight. And that gives you the flexibility. But again, how do you make money in the market? You need to use your brain. And when you think about it, again, it's about the focus. It's about getting good at one thing. So when I started trading, it was the end of 2008. And again, here it is, it's almost 2025. I've been doing nothing but gaps since I started trading. It took me about three years to develop my system, but it was a three year uh, trial and error process that I went through, which was well worth it because now I know what to do in the market and I've stayed focused on that and nothing else since. But what do I do? I'm determining who is in control. If you determine who is in control, you know which direction to take the stock or the overall market. So again, who's in control? The bulls or the bears? If you know the bulls are in control, you would go long. If the bears are in control, you would short. Again, this sounds very simplistic, but at the end of the day, many traders are trying to do things that are very, very tricky or go against what's happening with the power of money and therefore they lose. And again, there were people actually um, that, you know, have been buying, were buying the market yesterday while it was selling off the control yesterday, and I'm talking about the QQQ to the SPY, either in market index, either ETF, the control yesterday was to the downside. You would have lost yesterday if you were long. The only way to make money in the market yesterday was to short, okay? And the market actually gapped yesterday, which we'll talk about as well. So how do I determine who is in control? I rate the gap. So I use a 26-point checklist. It tells me what to trade but most importantly, it tells me the control, okay? If I have that control on my side, it's very easy to make money. Again, retail traders, for the most part, there are anomalies, there were a few Reddit stocks that happened. Of course, again, when I say it's an anomaly, it's a once in a lifetime thing on one day where something would be moved by retail traders. But for the most part, institutional money, hedge funds, big banks, huge, large professional traders that take big size in the market with volume, they're the ones that are moving the market. They're the ones that are creating the momentum. They're the ones that are in control. And if you learn how to trade with that money, again, whether it's up or down, long or short, that is how you're going to be successful, okay? <laughs> and I can see everybody's questions. If you have questions as we go along, you can plop it in the room. So anyways, what is a gap? A stock gaps when the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next simple. Well, most stocks gap on any single day. Technically, if something closes at 2202 and opens at 2201, you could say it's gapping down, it's gapping down by a penny, but not necessarily everything gaps in a way that is what I call predictable, okay, including the market. So again, why I look at the market every day, I don't trade the market every day. We had a monster, monster short this week and put, we did puts and we did a day trade in Schwab. Kind of funny that I'm on this, I'm on their uh, channel tomorrow, but this was a massive short, what I call a monster short, where it was straight down selling. So this was uh, two days ago. Again, today's Thursday. Again, what is a gap? A gap is a difference to the close and the open. So Schwab closed here, gap down. This is a daily chart. So again, this was a couple of days ago, but I'm showing here what is a gap. It actually gapped again then. This was the, then the day of the first close. This was pre-earnings. It was ahead of time they announced, and then it gapped down again, then fell off a complete cliff. This was during the day yesterday. It closed with a tail. But either way, it was a massive, massive, massive short. And again, so we did puts in this. Here was the trade. So I do options. I send them out in an options newsletter before the open. I don't do the trade till the open. I sent this out at 9.08 a.m., the 69 puts. This was completely insane, completely insane. If you're still even in this today, I don't know why you would be, but you're still at money. So this cost around 60, 80 cents, somewhere in there you could have gotten it. 110 contracts, the risk was 8,800 from me. Again, I'm gonna go over a beginner risk here. Sold at seven, I think the high was eight. One might've gone over eight at one point. This was a 775% return on investment trade. If you took it on the day that I called it, on the morning and exited it yesterday, and again, 68,200. I don't have this, I didn't have time to update the stats on the options newsletter with, the, with these trades in here. This was completely insane. What if you risked $1,200? You could have made $9,300. This was insane. Now, again, people always say, well, can I do this if I'm a beginner? Can I? Yes, you can. Not every trade is going to go to what I call a piggy target. How do you know? You don't know till you're in it, till you're doing it, which we did. And then you see it. And then it's blowing through every target, blowing through the strike, 
blowing through everything, okay? And then you know, then you know it's gonna keep going and then you're seeing the selling. And again, we were talking about control. So going back to the daily chart here, who's in control of Schwab in the last two days, okay? The bears, the bears are in control. So this got sold off, it dumped. So again, this is or was basically an earnings trade. So one of the reasons that trading gaps is very profitable during this time of the year, between now and pretty much Labor Day, you have four quarterly earnings season, is because stocks have monster moves up or down during earnings if they're a good gap. Okay, so I rated this and this qualified to short it. If I had rated it and it didn't qualify to short it, I wouldn't have shorted it. There were some things that I rated in the last couple of days since earnings season started that I didn't short that gap down. So you can't short every gap down, just like you can't go long every gap up, okay? So it's not that simple, but it, I just wanna show you here the potential because people say, oh, I have to risk so much money. To... No, you have a certain amount of money, whatever the amount of money is that you have, that's it. You gotta come to terms with reality. Again, when I was having this conversation with someone two days ago, he was telling me how he was at a prop place and they were giving him all this money. That has nothing to do with anything. You could have you know, a million dollars in buying power but if you don't have the cash to support the position to take it, okay, or the wherewithal or the knowledge to take the correct trains, it doesn't matter how much buying power you have, okay? You have to take the amount of money you have, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, whatever it is, and that's how you're setting your risk. Because again, if you go back and look at the stats, not every trade I take works, okay? Some trades I take lose, but more trades that I take win than lose and then some are really big winners like this, which ended up being completely insane. But this is a great way to start off earnings season. And this was the trade that we did. And then we also, again, going back to what I was saying about fear and panic, we did a day trade in this, which I'm gonna go over, but it's the concept of shorting something that's falling, you have panic. So what do people do? They panic and they sell and they dump it. What happened yesterday in the market? Very simple, people sold off. Nobody short this market or very few people prior to yesterday anyways, why? Market's been running up like crazy. Almost every single day, you could have bought every dip in the market and made money. People have been doing that for the last six months, six and a half months. It, it's gonna come to an end. And when it does, people that don't know how to do anything but buy dips are going to lose, and they're gonna lose big time. So it is extremely important to know how to short and understand how to short. While I do go long, and sometimes we go long, Tesla was another one we did prior to the split that was a monster and, and, and well, actually no, uh, NVIDIA we did prior to the split, which was a monster trade we had this year. It was a couple weeks ago. Um, but again, overall, most of the time I'm shorting, but sometimes I go long. So we went long Tesla, we went long NVIDIA. Again, NVIDIA was very expensive before the split. The stock was almost, just didn't make any sense to day trade, but we did do calls on it which were options, and it was the only way that made it cost effective, but there were huge trades in that. Again, panic is something that typically comes in when a stock is falling. There were specific stocks, like I said, NVIDIA was one of them, where I think you had panic buying earlier this year. Again, this is way before the stock split, where people just couldn't get enough of it, couldn't get enough of it, and again, whatever the reason, some were earning, some were news, and it kept continuing up. Again, that has fallen off even yesterday that stock sold off too. Again, the stock cost now is much more effective to day trade if you wanna day trade it or do calls and puts in it. Then we did the day of, we didn't do it yesterday, we should have done it yesterday too. Uh, the 716 here, we did a day trade in this. Now, I get this question all the time, what do you mean by a day trade? A day trade is when you're shorting a stock or you're buying it on margin. So we shorted it here, this was the day of the 16th at 7010 and I got out here. This was a good trade, I thought I had a great exit, 4270 but it's nowhere near the low of the day. Again, I get this question a lot too. I don't always have a low of the day exit. That's not always the case. It would be impossible. You know, I'd be like a psychic if I could do that. My job is to make money. I usually trade fast in the morning for my day trades and I get in and out of this in the morning, but I just wanna show you where this went. That kept going even on that day. So you could have done this as a day trade. You could have done this as a put. You could have done it in and out a million times. Again, the power, the control, and why this is such a great example is to the downside, okay, to the downside. Any questions about that as we're going along? Oh, here's the, here's the one minute. So again, we were looking at the daily. This is the one minute in Schwab. Again, we got in this, got the drop, boom, done, out. But you could have held this all the way down. And I mean, it was completely insane, actually, even the first day where it went. 
What is the risk of reversal? What do you mean the risk of reversal? I do go long sometimes. I just said we went long Tesla and we went long Nvidia, but I prefer to short because short moves happen bigger and fast and quicker. And I like to be in and out and done in the morning. And again, I find that shorting, I have a niche. Why? Most traders go long. Most traders prefer to go long. So I have a niche in the fact that I've become an expert in shorting. Um, fake out reversal. I still don't understand the question, William. What do you mean by a fake out reversal? I don't know what you mean. Things, things go up, things go down. Nothing goes straight down. Nothing goes straight up. I don't know what you mean by that. That has nothing to do with the control. That has nothing to do with the control factor. Anyways, how do I figure this out? I rate gaps with a 26-point checklist. This rating system helps me determine who is in control. So the bottom line is, if you want to trade and make money and do well and do this for a living or do it on the side, whatever you, whatever your reason is for doing this, you need a method. You need a well-defined method. Without a well-defined method to replicate daily, how are you going to have consistent results? Because it's a consistency that a lot of people lack. And the danger for this market, because it's been so bullish, is people are buying dips and strong stocks, weak stocks, the market, anything, and it's not going to last whenever that is, whenever it ends. Could be now, could be today, could have been yesterday, could be in three months from now. I don't know. But people buy dips, and that does not consistently work. It does in a trending, very bullish market, which isn't the case all the time. But the consistency you need is to find something each day that you can trade, regardless of market direction, whether up or down, and make money. Because again, you have to make money pretty much if you can, you know, four or five days a week. But again, people just, they don't understand that they have to be consistent. And it's extremely important to do that. Anybody can make money doing something anytime just by dumb luck. It's the consistency that counts. So for me, I'm looking for a specific set of requirements in a 26 point in the daily chart. So that's how I'm figuring it out. That's how I do it. If I get a 20 point rating, that for me is enough to qualify to do it in the direction of the gap. If I don't get that rating, I don't do it at all or I don't train. So you think about it. You have to get consistent results to be successful. That's the big thing many traders lack. And they're just all over the place. Um, if you're saying if Schwab reverses, it didn't reverse. It's set up. We got the drop. Again, I'm still not sure of your question. I didn't look at this today. It reversed yesterday. Why? You had people that went long it, that thought it was down too much, that bought it. That was a dumb thing to do, but people did it. And you also had shorts covering yesterday. Again, I don't know if that, I don't really know if I understand your question. Would I have bought Schwab yesterday? No. Could you have bought it at the low and made money into four o'clock? Yes. Is that a good trade? No. Again, just by what I'm saying here, you can make money doing all kinds of different things. It doesn't mean it consistently works. That's the whole point. For all you know, that could have bounced and then gone all the way back down and broke the low before the close at the time that that bounced. I forget exact time, but it had enough time to do that on the day. Uh, for my day trades, I do use a stop. It's a limit order stop. I put the stop in. I call it a hard stop. I will get stopped out and lose, which is how I have some losses from the day trade stats in the room. For options, I don't have any stop because my risk is my stop. If you're risking $1,000 on an options trade, you can't lose more than $1,000. That's the beauty of trading options. They're basically cash positions that are not on margin. You should have an options account set up as a cash account so that you don't have to have the $25,000 that they require for a margin account. But either way... That is it. I don't kill the trade in the middle of it if that's what you're saying to me for options. I play them out. They win or lose. I'm in some trades right now that I am still up, that I'm watching today into next week, and I'm also in things that expire tomorrow that I'm down that could go today, and i got to watch today or tomorrow, but I may lose in them. So the reality is that I play them out. So I'm in things that I took a couple days ago um, that I didn't get out of. I'm actually long Tesla. So I, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to make money in that because of the way everything fell, we'll see. I got 24 hours, but I might lose in that. So I don't kill it, if that's what you mean. So I, my stop is my risk. Anyways, getting back to this whole thought process, okay. When I went to school, I majored in philosophy. It may seem like a strange thing that I'm in finance now, but I majored in philosophy because I thought I wanted to go to law school to become an attorney and or I could have become a philosophy professor, which is really a, an interesting career path. But anyways, I majored in philosophy. And so, you know, we, I took a lot of classes about critical thinking. I'm a, I'm a very analytical person. That's still my personality, my behavior. But interestingly enough, it really helped me develop a trading system. 
So I think of trading, and, and, and this is how I think every day, if this happens, then that's going to happen. And that's how I think about it. And that's how I designed my whole 26 points. That's how I think of every trade before I take it. So it's like a conditional and a hypothetical proposition. If this happens, then this is going to happen. So if these things add up and I get 20 points or more, which I see on the daily chart, then Schwab, for example, is going to fall. And that's what happened. Okay. So there's no 100%. I look at the odds. Okay. I'm looking at the odds of something. Every time you take a trade, you weigh the pros and cons, and every time you have to put the odds in your favor, there is no 100%. There's no 100% system. There's no 99% system. Anybody that tells you that is telling you something that's false. And you should know something that it sounds too good to be true. It probably is. So again, you, you, you look at all the information you have available to you. I train based on technical analysis. Again, based on the charts, you get the charts from wealth charts. You need that data. That data, live data in charts, is an indispensable tool which allows you to make live dis trading decisions in real time. And I analyze it and I say, if I'm seeing this, then the stock's going to drop, for example, or rally or whatever. And that's how I figure it out. Okay, does that make sense? I didn't even look at Meta this morning, Bob. If I have time, I will look at it when we're done. Um, uh, that could be all over the place because of the fact that that has earnings. I would be very careful about doing something in the earnings. For example, I'm not short Netflix. I didn't go long Netflix. Actually, we could have shorted Netflix earlier in the week, but the cost of the options was wackadoo because the stock has earnings tonight. So I think Meta might have earnings next week. I'm not sure if they're not next week or the following week. So anything in that's going to be crazy expensive, and I would just lay low um, it, going into the earnings and something. Anyways, trading, like I said, isn't gambling. Trading isn't gambling. You have to look at it and put the odds in your favor. And, and, and that's fine. That's actually good. Because you know what? Many people that are trading are not doing that. Many people are constantly wanting black and white answers. Well, if I buy it on the 20 period moving average, then it's going to rally. And then they get upset if it doesn't work. Okay? There is no black and white in trading. I hate to tell you. You got to use your brain. You got to analyze it. Again, I'm constantly, constantly, constantly looking at something and analyze it. I We did actually two things yesterday that I looked at and I analyzed. We did Mu and NVIDIA. Those were the day trades yesterday we shorted. You must use your brain to trade. What's wrong with that? You're going to be head and shoulders again, again if you use your brain and have a method that forces you to do that, which my system does, because many people want to rely on indicators which don't work consistently. If it was that easy to trade, no one would lose. That's not the way the market is. You have to use your brain. And once you come to that conclusion, you are going to be better off. You're actually going to be smarter than the guy next to you who is still relying on, on 10 different indicators that are on his chart that looks like a planetary solar system that he thinks are going to tell him how, what to do to make money. It's just not like that, okay? There's a nuances to it, an understanding to it, and that's the whole point of it, okay? You love the philosophy background. I don't look at delta. I look at the gap. Um, where are we at? Okay, so again, I use the 26-point rating system. That's all you need. Too many traders are all over the place doing thing after thing after thing after thing. And guess what? They never get good. They never become an expert. So getting back to what I was saying, the crux of it, the philosophy, if you want to think about it, there's one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock. It's money. And not a little bit of money, but a lot of money. And I hate to say it. Again, everyone's always, oh, the rich are so bad. I, I don't know where that comes from. You know, back in the 80s, you know, when the shows were famous, you know, remember the TV shows, Dynasty, Dallas, everybody loved rich people. Now we're in a world everybody hates rich people. I don't know. It's crazy. You know, you have money. You actually have the power to be able to go and move to a different state, move to a different country, quit your job and do something else. Trade, invest, risk more money. You need to get to the point that you aspire to be wealthy, do something else, and then you have to think like the people that have money who not all of them are smart, but some of them are, and a lot of them are actually. So power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power money people, of which there was a lot of in the market. And so they're not your enemy. They're actually people that if you can trade on the side of institutional money, on the side of the power money, you are going to make more money. Think about it. Do you want to follow someone that's successful and rich or do you want to follow someone that's poor and dumb? So, I mean, it's just like, it's like a no brainer. Okay. It's very interesting. I live in New York City. I live in Manhattan. I see everything here. Uh, we have, you know, illegal immigrants roaming the streets. We have homeless people, which I see in Central Park. 
I'm living in a building with billionaires. I see it all at such a stark contrast, which I see on 24 hours, seven days a week in my life here in the city where I really see everything. And it constantly, constantly reminds me whether I see someone extremely wealthy or whether I see someone that's homeless, how it's just like that, that can make or break somebody, um, you know, in the world. Okay. So taking care of yourself, I don't want to get too far off a tangent, but taking care of yourself, keeping yourself healthy, keeping your brain healthy, wanting to use your brain. Okay. Not like ignoring it. So many people just say, Oh, I just want to buy something. I could just plug it in and go doink. And now why don't you want to use your brain? I mean, it's just, it's the best thing that you have and you need to develop it. Okay. And so learning, teaching and learning and doing, and all of these things helps you develop into a more evolved human being, which you're going to need to actually survive in the world. And if you didn't know that since COVID, well, you were been asleep for the last four years. Anyways, let's get back to this. So every day I'm looking for stocks to trade that have number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Number two, big moves on the day. Number three, early confirmation of my bias and then move between 9.30 and 10 and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. So again, what I've found with people is people, again, I've been teaching people since I started the business. It's more than 10 years now, 12 years I've had the stock swoosh. People really, they like want to have somebody to go to and ask a question. Like people will call me, they will email me, they ask me, like people want a support system. They want to know you're there. And I'm here, I'm here, I'm a regular person, I live in New York. So people wanna know, they can pick up the phone and call me after the class, before the class, whatever. People want that support system. They, they want me to call the trades. They, they, they want me, even though when they, once they learn it, to double, triple check themselves. And that's really, really important, okay? I don't use AI in my analysis, no. Um, Okay. All right. So I'm going to very quickly go through here one week. And again, I'm showing you here beginner risk one week of trades of that you could have done everything I called in the room, but I'm using an average risk of $1,000. Okay. One week of trades. There were five trades, four winners, one loser, zero break evens with an average risk of a thousand win ratio was 80%. You could have made 5340. So let's go over. This was, this was the week before the July 4th holiday. So this wasn't even an earnings season week. So this was 624. Actually, we 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 uh, did this one right in here. This was Tesla. OK, so this was the trade with an average risk of $1,000. You risked 950. This was a trade. We actually went long. Here was a long. You could have made $800. OK, this was this little tiny guy in here. We actually went long and it worked and we got in, got out. Boom. And that even closed right on the day. But you could have made $800. What's wrong with that? Nothing. And you're done for the day. Then on Tuesday, we didn't do anything. No gaps rated per the checklist. Again, this was going into the holiday week. We didn't do anything. Then we did the spy. This was Wednesday. We did the spy. This didn't work. We lost to the spy. Uh, so again, if you had risked an average of 1,000, 1,200, this is an exact science. Again, this is a day trade. If you had shorted it, we lost. Okay. So this lost in here. So you would have taken the loss. Then we did on 626, we did BAC. This was a really nice one. Stock closed here, gap down, fell, this worked. So this was a short, and this was cheap. Actually, this was really cheap. So we did an add in this. Again, risk 1,050, could have made 3,120. Nice trade. And then we did WBA. Uh, that was in here, 627. We shorted this. Again, it may not look like much, but you could have lumped on the size. It was about 50 some cent. Uh, for your risk profit was 1680. That was this gap here. Again, stock close here, gap down, open dropped. Again, you could have done this trade in the room, got in, got out. Again, this is an average risk here. You could have risked 1260. And then we also did mu. We did mu on here. It was 627. You could have made 940. And that was in here. Stock close here, gap down, open dropped. So again, one week with an average risk of a thousand. Again, 80% win ratio, one loser. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. This is what I'm talking about, about chunking it out. This is how you do it. You could just do day trades. You don't have to do any options. You can open up a prop account. There's lots of places out there now you can check prop accounts where you can open up an account if you have less than 25,000. Otherwise, if you want to go to a retail broker, you need 25,000 or more and you're going to get four to one margin. But you, you can risk $1,000 and make money. Okay, what's wrong with this? Most people are losing. So to make five grand a week, and that wasn't even a busy week. 
is totally, totally doable. Again, those were trades I called in the room. I used the rating system. I rated the gaps. If you trade, you have to have a plan. So many people say, well, I, I want to make money. I want to trade. I want to become wealthy, but I have no idea what to do. I have no idea what to do. Well, you need a plan of action. It's like if you said, well, I'm going to move or I'm going to build a house or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that. You need a plan. Otherwise, I mean, again, anything that you do, something, something that's a big undertaking, you need a plan of action to do it. I trade, someone's asking a question, MB. I rate gaps. If the stock is gapping down like Schwab, I'll rate it to short. If the stock is gapping up like Tesla, I'll rate it to go long. I'm not going long bearish gaps. I'm not shorting bullish gaps. So for example, if I rated a bullish gap up like Tesla and it rated like 15 points and I'm just making this up, then I wouldn't go long it, but I wouldn't short it. Does that make sense? So I wouldn't do the opposite. Mary's asking about your, the Mary, I don't think you understand buying power. Mary's talking about 500,000, 1% gain, this and that. If you are looking to trade, say a position and you risk $1,000, your buying power, our margin, and I'm just going to make this up to make it easy. Say you take 1,000 shares of $100 stock and it costs $100,000 in buying power. That's not $100,000 in cash, Mary, that you need to take that trade. At a prop account, you need 10 grand. At a retail account, you need 25 grand. Now, if you're, if you're big on percentages, if that bothers you that you need um, 10 grand to get the 100 grand in buying power to make 1,000 in five, 10 minutes or whatever I did these margin trades, then I'd say do options. Because in an option, you have no margin or buying power. Only what you risk is what you need to take the position if you're somebody that's big on percentages. And again, it was 775% return on investment for that option. It's return on investment in options versus risk to reward in day trades. I'm looking to flip it over one to run. If you're risking 1,000, you're looking to make 1,000. I don't look at it as far as the margin. Why? Because I might do a stock that's $30 and I might do a stock that's $500. So the amount of buying power you take in every trade is not equal every day, but your risk is. What do I mean by your risk? The difference between the entry and the stop. If I call trade, again, if, if I say 10 by 50, that could be 40 cents. So if, you're, if your stop is 40 cents, that means you could take a lot more size than if the stop's $2. I, I think, Mary, you need to need to understand margin or buying power a little bit more because you don't need full cash one-to-one -to, -one to do margin trades. Maybe you're not familiar with trading on margin. Can I mention that things cover the 26 points? No, that's why I teach in the class, which is 16 hours. And also why I probably am losing my voice because I've been talking so much teaching lately. <laughs> but that is what you will pay me for in the class because the information is worth something not that we could even have the time to go through that because the class is 16 hours. Um, Marty isn't getting anything out of this. Well, then it, what I do isn't for you. What I do isn't for you, Marty. I mean, again, when you are someone that if you listen to somebody and they connect with them, then you'll know it. I always say the people that have come to me are meant to find me. If something that I said connects with you in the, in the past 30 minutes I've been talking, then reach out and email me at melissathestockswish.com. If you don't feel like you're getting anything out of this, then this is not for you. And again, that's why there's all kinds of different things. If you think what I've said in the last 30 minutes is lacking depth, then you didn't listen to anything I said. I said some extremely important things which weren't proprietary. It was actually free information that I gave you about using your brain, about focusing on one thing, about trading momentum, about trading on the side of institutional money, about the fact that you have to be focused and look at conditionals when you make decisions about trades, that trading isn't gambling. I gave you tons of free information um, that actually really was is worth something, actually. Um, many trades you take in a wink. How many trades are taken in a wink? Again, in earnings season, I take, I'm taking more trades than I take in non earning season. So I try to take one day trade a day, maybe two. We did two things yesterday because everything was falling. We could have done more. As far as options, if it's a busy week with earnings, then I might do 20 to 30 trades a week. If it's not a busy week, I might do two to five. Um, after the class, we'll talk about that at the end. Let me just quickly go through here some options. And again, I, I want to watch my time. 
if you only wanted to do options, like I think it was Mary, she was worried about percentages, maybe options is better for you because you don't have to worry about margin, okay? You're putting up a dollar, you have a dollar, you know it's worth a dollar, you don't have to worry about buying power. So, but if you risked a thousand in this one week, I'm just gonna quickly go through these trades. We did Apple, here, someone was asking about going long. We went long Apple. Again, this is the last week in, um, the last week of June, we did Apple, ran up here, we did the 220 calls, okay? This was a nice trade. If you were at 1100, you could have made 1420. So I called it on 617, we got out on 617 right here. Got the rally up, out. So you don't have to hold anything. And again, this was 132% return on investment. This isn't on margin. You risked 1120 and you got out and made 1480. Now, maybe that's something better for people that don't wanna trade on margin, you know? You just put it up and you take the trade and you get out. Again, this is all based on momentum. Okay, momentum, momentum, momentum. We also did the BA puts. So we did the BA puts here. This was, again, closed here, gap down, fell. Then it gapped down again. You could have got out of this. This is the 175 puts we did in this. You could have made 50%. Then we did them again and this one lost. So I got back in this short here. This was right after I exited this the second day I lost in this one. It didn't go through. That was 628 expiration. The whole thing went bust and that one lost. Then we did Navinia. We're talking about Navinia. I lost in this. So I went long Navinia there. This one lost. That was the 140 calls. It hasn't gone up there since actually. Um, so again, lost in the Navinia. Then we did bad, but this was a nice little snug as a bug short we did here. Again, it was a put. Stock close here, gap down. Again, I rated the gap. The gap rated good. It took a little bit to go. That was fine. Again, I didn't kill it. I didn't kill it. It was down and then it went. So again, I give trades a chance to work. We did the 74 puts. And again, I'm, I'm trying to show you here the possibilities of making money if you're consistent with one system, even with a lower end risk or less than I'm risking. Again, you could risk more. This was 100% return investment. Then we did the Tesla calls. This was crazy. We got in Tesla really early. We were in this early. We did the 185 calls. Um, and this flew up like a banshee. Remember that? This was 621. It kept going and going and going. This train, again, was a 254% return investment. Just another, this is a big trade. Again, this isn't Schwab, but I mean, this to make over 200% in option is a great trade. Then we did puts in the market. Didn't work. Lost in this. Lost in this. This was 624. That one went bust. Then we did Tesla again. We did the, I sometimes I'll stack something. We did the 185s. We did the 190s. Actually, we did two in Schwab. So I stacked some in that as well um, for the Schwab that we just did the, pus, the puts. This Tesla trade was huge. Again, this was over 200%. But I'll stay on top of something if I like it a lot. And then we did the puts in the SPY and these didn't work too. These we did. We shorted the market back at the end of June and it didn't work. It didn't work. It just didn't go anywhere. This lost. And then WFC, we did here. Again, stock close here, gap down, fell, gap down here. This was a little one that we did. This was cheap, 60 cents for one contract, which is ridiculous. I mean, again, anybody can do this. You could have taken 10 contracts and over $600 and, and made like over 300 bucks. Again, that's totally doable for anybody with any size of account. Then we did the BACs. The day we did the day trade, we did the puts. Got in, got out that day. This was another one that was really cheap, 45 cents, 70% return on investment. We did Tesla again, we did the 200 calls, and this was a really nice trade going into the holiday week. This actually kept going. So I did this here that expired on the fifth, and I just wanna show you here, I did the 200s. I got out of this because I thought I was doing the right thing, but if you actually held this into the fifth on the last day, which was crazy, the market was open the day after, the July 5th, it went gangbusters. Like, I don't know where the close was that day, but I it was I think it was like 50 points or something this went. So and I didn't hold it that. But I'm just, again, when you're in a trade and you're up this much money, you have to look at it and you have to get out. We did MU earlier. We did the MU on 627, that was here. Close here, gap down, fell. And that was a winner. That was 40%. We did Apple calls again. This was another winner. Again, we've been going long Apple, not right now, but we have been going long Apple. And then we did the 205s in Tesla again. This was another big winner, almost 400%. And again, some huge trades here with this because we were going long this and this just kept running up. You almost could have said this was panic buying, but again, the earnings for Tesla are next week. And that's a big one to watch. Again, I forget if it's, I wanna say it's Tuesday. 
Tuesday or Wednesday is Tesla next week. So in one week of trading here, you could have made it over 12,000 in options. Again, one week of day trades, you could have made 5,300. It depends how active you want to be. It depends how many trades you want to take. It depends whether you can afford to open up a margin account or if you need an options account, which is cash. But if you're trading options, we're buying the calls and then we're selling them to exit. We're buying the puts and we're selling them to exit. When we do a day trade, I'm shorting it and I'm shorting it on margin. So it's risk to reward versus return on investment. You must have a margin account to do day trades, but it's not cash for cash for dollar. You don't need $3 million to do the day trades. You trade on margin. Every big trader trades on margin. Um, the alerts are the options newsletter that come to your email. The trading room is a live trading room. Uh, you can do options. Someone's asking about day trades. Uh, that's what we were just talking about. Um, do I wait for the guy to pull back or go right in? I do six different setups. It depends how it sets up. There's no, not just one setup. I'm doing directional options, yes. You find my approach refreshing, good. Thank you. Anyways, getting in conclusion here, it's about working smarter, not harder. Because again, if you're all over the place doing too many strategies, doing too many trades per day, what your odds go down that you're gonna be successful. It's like somebody trying to you know, hit blackjack and play blackjack and hit it every time and win over and over and over and over and over again, or if you're playing roulette. I mean, you're not gonna hit it all the time. You get a big win, you walk away, go see a show, come back. You know, to sit and trade all day between 9.30 and four is a disaster. So I don't trade all day. The room is open in the morning and I'm trading and then I'm done. And if I'm in options, then I hold them and I watch them and I can check them at lunch or check them before the close. So it's really about working smarter, not harder, because again, you are going to lose if you are doing too many trades. The odds just go against you. There's too many things that are happening during the live day. And again, this is not just because it's an election cycle, it's FOMC meetings, it's something that happens, you know, politically, okay? Like if the market had been open on Saturday, actually, if it was Monday through Friday, even after hours, the market would have tanked Saturday night. I can absolutely tell you that. The market had time to digest the political news over the weekend by Monday because it was Saturday and Sunday. But we would have absolutely been down. We would have been gapping down and selling off hard Saturday night if it was like Tuesday or whatever that, that happened. Um, do I use limit orders? I exit a trade um, or I put in a limit order when I put the stop in. When I'm exiting it, it's it's when I'm when I'm getting out of it, it's set with a limit to get out of it with a three penny cushion. But again, a stock is moving very, very fast and has a spread. So if I press to get out of it at six, if I get filled at six oh three, that's not a big deal. If I press to get out of it at six, I shouldn't get filled at six fifty, if that's what you mean. So I mean, yeah, you're gonna have some wiggles and jiggles and you're going to have a spread we try not to do things that are crazy spready netflix is very spready and again we may do that as an option if it's if the gap's good tomorrow i don't know i don't know i don't know what it's going to do tonight um a prop account is if you don't have the twenty-five thousand. if you want to get a series license in the u.s and trade at a u.s registered prop firm yes you have to take a test if you want to go to some place that's outside of the u.s you don't have to take a test there's lots to, out there and you can look at all of them and again, you can open up a, a, an account at a broker and with $2,000 in trade options. If your account has $2,000 in it, then I wouldn't risk more than $200 per trade. Any other questions here? I'm doing the weekly options. I might do something like, I didn't do anything today because I've I've stepped on, but I would do something out for next Friday if I did something today. So it's basically a little bit more than a week. Anybody else here? I'm trying to look at all the questions. Anyways, like I was saying, I, I live along Central Park. This is Central Park. I took a picture. My life has changed dramatically since I decided to trade. It was very difficult at the beginning because I didn't know what I was doing. No one knows what they're doing when they start. No one is born and decides to trade and makes money. So people go through a process and they take a series of classes or they teach themselves how to trade and they trade with live money and they lose or people trade on demos for years trying to figure stuff out that they never know is gonna work because they're not trading live money. I traded live money and figured out my own system and I took one class and that was it. 
And I found in all the years that I've been trading, there's very little information out there about gaps and what does exist about gaps actually is wrong or incorrect and doesn't work. So I've decided to focus on mainly shorting and gaps, which has given me a niche even now, even still 2024, because many people don't know how to do it. And people do tend to prefer to go long. But, you know, you have to weigh again what your goals are with how much effort you're willing to put into it because you may take a series of classes until you find something that works. You may have to spend money. You may lose money in the market. This is a process, but it is well worth it if this is something that you really want to do. And that's not a decision that I can make for you. That's a decision that you make for yourself. Do you really want to do it? Yes or no? If you do, you won't do you won't stop until you figure it out whether you come and take my class and learn from me and pay me to learn my system and trade with me or something else because the fact is whatever you do for a living whatever it is you really have to love what you do because you were going to do it your job your career for hours and hours and hours every day for a long time and it's just going to be a huge part of your life and one of the reasons i got into trading and decided to do it was because i was doing mortgages for 17 years and i started to hate my job I had, it was affecting my happiness and my life and I was far too young. It was seven days a week and dealing with realtors and banks. And again, the industry was changing in 2007, 2008 and I wanted an out. But trading is not like you fill out a job application and you start making 100 grand a year and get a check every week. You do have to use your brain. You do have to be smart about it and you do have to learn. I always get questions, Can what if you're a beginner? I've taught beginners. You may have a learning curve, but I've, I, I mean, people have a learning curve. Sometimes they come to me, but they've been trading longer than I'm alive because they've been doing things that don't work. Okay. So you will learn what I know, but the idea is you could be in the trading room, mimic my trades, take my trades in live time, and then hopefully be able to make money while you're learning. You may make some mistakes here or there, but you're going to learn and you're going to go through the learning curve. You have to decide if it's worth it. People always say, well, what are the guarantees? I can guarantee you this. If you quit, you definitely will not make it. So guess what? Don't quit. If this is something that you want to do and you really want to do it, I absolutely know that you can. One, I've done it myself. And two, I've taught people that are trading with me as long as I've had the business that are still with me. In fact, one of them is helping me out run the room today while I'm here with you. He's running the room with me. He's one of my first students and he's still with me. So again, you know, you can do it. It's not impossible. It's just the lure of making money and jumping around from the next big get rich quick thing is so prevalent out there and everyone wants to believe it that they jump around too much. And then, of course, as you're jumping around, paying for classes and paying for this, paying for that, you lose money and then you get down on yourself and your confidence goes in the toilet. You know, you have to get strong. You, this is one of the qualities that you need to do this. There's many people that are trading the market that just are in fear constantly questioning their decisions 50-50. If I take a trade like Schwab, in fact, I said it in the room yesterday about the market. I said 100% conviction and no chance of failure the market falls today. Do it. And we did puts in the market actually yesterday. I don't have them in here. But I just am in that point where I'm trading for so long, it's unknowing. Yes, I go through the process. Yes, I rate the gap. Yes, I do all the things I teach you. But the benefit of trading with me is I know I've been doing this for so long. Does it mean every trade I, I take works? No, some lose. But every trade I take, I feel like it's going to work. And that's called 100% conviction. And if you're not trading with someone like that, or you don't feel like that about yourself, then you're 50-50 crapshoot, and you're still in that gambling mentality. And part of learning and the benefit of learning something and not just following somebody's trades or signing up for a subscription service is you're going to understand why I liked Schwab, why I like Tesla Long, why I think Netflix is going to do whatever it's going to do tomorrow. You know, Because if you understand something, it helps alleviate the pain of taking the risk. You have to take risks to make money. There's no getting away from that, but it is what it is. And again, a lot of people sign up for classes that are very cheap. Sometimes my class is not cheap. My class is seven grand. And they sign up for these cheap classes and they take all these trades that lose. Well, then they end up losing more than the cost of my class. It's like, okay, if you want to take bad trades, I mean, just like there's, there's so many bad trades you could take. The idea is to take good trades. And the idea is to learn good information. The idea is to be successful. And think about what I said earlier about the fact that, again, you want to be with people that are wealthy. You see, this is the people living in these buildings here. These are this building right here is the most expensive building in the city of Manhattan. You can't even buy an apartment there for less than 30 million. In fact, I don't even think there's any. You can't even buy anything there right now. There's nothing for sale, even if I wanted to buy. <laughs> 
So those are the people that you want to be with. Let's look at some more questions. Uh, how do I find the watch list? Anywhere. There's you, there's the plot. You can turn on CNBC and get a watch list. Um, I don't know what you're talking about, about what you're going to do a put in for tomorrow. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know if you mean the market. Um, what is the key to trading success? You have to learn a good system. You have to learn a good system. That's what we've been talking about. Um, I buy calls and sell them. I buy puts and sell them. I don't know what the market's doing right now. Like I told you, I didn't do any new trades today. I would sit tight anyways if I wasn't even here in this lecture. Why? Because Netflix is out tonight and Netflix is going to affect the market. If Netflix is up, the market's going to be up. If Netflix is down, the market's going to be down. Guess what? Netflix could be down and rally. I may not short it. Netflix could be up and fall, in which case I'm not going to go long. And that's going to affect the market too. Do you follow me? So if Netflix is up and falls and the market's up, the market's going to fall too. Do you understand what I mean? Netflix is a market stock. So there's not, I don't know. It's like too many things to look at. But it's out tonight. You can watch it tonight. You don't even have to wait for tomorrow. The, the Netflix is out tonight after 4 o'clock. And that's going to be a big one because Netflix could move 100 points, 50 points, 75 points in the gap. So that's definitely going to have momentum, whatever we decide to do with it. I hope it's good. I hope it's good enough I can get a play in it. But if the options are going to be, the options are still going to be expensive, though. I still think they're going to be expensive tomorrow. Anyways, like I was saying, you need to get value out of your education. You need to start to get serious about what you're doing. A lot of people trade for a long time and they don't get anywhere with it. I don't get that. It's like it's like if you went on a diet, you were on a diet for a year and you didn't even lose one pound. Why go on a different diet? I mean, do something else. It does it that doesn't make sense. You're wasting time. Anyways, my whole system is looking at the 26 points. It's about empowering yourself to do it. Again, we talked about this. You're learning all the pieces of the puzzle together, the points, the entries, the targets, the exits you will learn in the class. So my class is called the Golden Gap Course. This teaches a strategy on how to trade gaps. The course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to play the stock on the day. The course teaches you chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. And the class I teach once a month. Now, I am doing a class, ne not this weekend, next weekend. Then there is no other classes online till October. I'm not doing any classes in August. And September, I am doing a live class in New York, which is going to be more expensive than the online class. So if you want to get in and trade with us now, the class to do would be the July class, which is next weekend. Otherwise, it's not going to be online till October. Uh, this is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. And again, the class is online. So I'm taking August off for the month for classes. And the tuition for the class is $69.99. So this July class, the 27th and 28th, is online. It's 9 to 5 Saturday and Sunday. Then there's no classes online in August or September. And I'm doing a live class in New York September 20th, 21st, and 22nd. If you're interested in that, you can email me. That's $12,999. You'd come to New York. You'd come to Manhattan. You get the information about the location. It's going to be in a boardroom. It's going to be a great experience. If you don't want to do that, you could do the online class. And the one to do is next weekend. And then the next online class after this is not till October. So I am doing a huge Christmas in July package, though, for people to help them get up, to help them get started. Again, this is going on through Sunday. So you'd sign up by Sunday, July 21st. You get the options newsletter free through the end of 2025. That's huge. The room through the end of 2025 and the market report through the end of 2025. This ends Sunday. You do the class then the following weekend. And again, this class is online in July. You would get all my trades through the rest of this year, 2024, and all of next year, 2025. This is huge. You would get all my trades and you wouldn't have, to, you wouldn't have to rush. Like everyone wants to, I have to quick make it back, the cost of the class. No, you have plenty of time to get in, learn, take your time. Decide if you want to do options, day trades, both, whatever you want to do. And again, I did address this earlier. You can be a beginner and do this. I have taught people who have never traded before, and it's really important to take your time. And I think giving this amount of time free in the room and the newsletter really helps people. But this is a Christmas and July package that ends Sunday. If you're interested in this, email me at my email here. And let me ask. No, there's no repeating the class. It's once and done. You shouldn't have to repeat it. Um, yes, I have a live trading room. The trading room is open every morning, 9.30 to 10, 10 I said that earlier. I'm here with you today. I have a, a, a student that helps me out with the room. He's doing the room now. I don't know what they did. I, I didn't trade today. 
I didn't look at DPZ at all. I didn't look at anything today except for the market and the stuff I'm in because I wasn't trading today. Any other questions by anyone? Again, if you're interested, you can email me here at melissa at thestockswish.com. And if you have questions, you can email me there. Um, or if you're interested in the class. My watch list depends on how many gaps I have. So I'm not rating like 100 gaps every morning, if that's what you mean. So again, without going into great detail in the morning, I can just very quickly scan and say, no, 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 no. And then I might make a list of like 10 things that I rate. So I usually takes about an hour, but I still don't rush it. I still don't rush what I'm doing. But again, it's, it depends this time of the year, but I, you can scan and go through lots of things and already discount them. Very few things are predictable. That's just the reality. So I might look at tons of stuff and then only rate five things and then only do one. It's really about narrowing it, uh, narrowing it down. Again, that's another misconception with trading, thinking, well, if everything's going this way, you know, or all these, there's, that's why you don't trade all day. That's why no one should be trading for six and a half hours. Your odds go down, there's less things to do. There's very few things that are predictable in the market to do in any given day. There's more in earning season, that's true. We get enough to do it, but you would never be doing 20 things a day. You wouldn't even get 20 things every day that rate good to do. There's not that many things that are actually, you can look at it and say, this has a high odds of working. Remember, that's the genius of the system. You're trying to look for the best thing. It's like finding a needle in a haystack, that one nugget. And that's where I came up with the idea of calling it the golden gap. It's like finding gold in the market when you find a gap like Schwab or something that's gonna work like that because you can load it up, you can load on the size, and then of course you can do an option and a day trade. Any other questions here before I let everybody go? Um, Fine-tuning it, I fine-tuned it over the three years that I created it. I haven't added any points since that, if that's your question. The fine-tuning is me. The 27th point is Melissa Armo, me. My intuition and trading with me every day when I tell you something's gonna work, when I say 100% conviction, no chance of failure, the market's gonna fall today. So therefore, short the cues, short the spy, short the world, and that's what we did yesterday. <laughs> and, it, and everything worked, with the exception of the banks. Yeah, the banks were the only things that rallied this week. And I'll tell you right now, the reason the banks rallied this week is because Trump could win. And he talked about appointing Jamie Dimon as the treasurer of the secretary. And if that's the case, then banks will never have any problems to get everything they want in the future. Because if Jamie Dimon leaves Chase and becomes part of the next administration of Trump wins, that's a huge win for banks. And that's, you know, I mean, banks rallied with the exception of Schwab in the last couple of days, even though some of them were down on earnings, banks had incredible moves in the last several days. And really... It was because of that news out about Jamie, Di Jamie Dimon. Of course, the election hasn't happened. He's still at Chase. But that would be just really a win-win for all banks. All right, Melissa. Well, thank, thank you so you. much for being with us. I'm going to.